Hello everyone. So I was having problems with my car heating up when I was driving. I could drive for five or so miles and it would still have the needle on fully cold and it wouldn't really have much warm air. So I was reading about what could cause this and I uh, looked into it and it turns out that the thermostat, if the thermostat fails open, that's this device right here. Um, and this is the one that I just removed took out of my car. So if this fails open, then what happens is you've constantly got coolant running through your radiator. And so what this is supposed to do when your engine is running cold is close off the radiator so that the coolant around the engine stays there and warms up until your engine's warm enough uh, it, for good conditions. And then once it reaches that level, uh, for my car it's about 195 degrees, then this thermostat will open up and have coolant run through the radiator so you can keep the engine at that ideal temperature. Um, so this had failed on mine, it failed open, which is better than if it had failed closed because if it had failed closed then my car would have overheated rather quickly. But I'm just going to show you um, how to replace this real quick. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find our thermostat where that housing is going to be. So what you're going to do is follow the lower radiator hose um, specifically for Hondas and that's going to take you to the housing which is right there. So our thermostat is inside of that so in order to get to that we're going to probably have to get this uh, air filter out of the way so we can get in there um, and better remove that. So we've got a couple screws we need to undo here to get that box out and then we got to take this uh, tubing out Okay, so we've got the air filter box off, um, so next we just got to get this tubing off, so we've got several connections. We've got this here, which you can basically just detach off from this, um, and then we've got this tubing here, so we're going to have to connect this. Uh, this wire leads here, so we've got that, and then there's one more down in here, so we'll just need to connect those three, as well as this screw right here then we should be able to pull this off. So actually I made it more difficult on myself. All I need to do is pull this out from this uh, air intake tubing and you don't actually have to disconnect each one of these so I gotta go ahead and reconnect those but no problem and then we can pull this right off. Okay so now that we've got that tubing off there you can see the throttle butterfly valve. Um, so here is what we want to get inside of. I've actually got a screw missing. It's not that great. But um, what we're going to need to do is get this off this here. So this is our uh, radiator hose. And so I might need to take a couple things out of the way here. Probably this. Uh, there's a clip on this hose that we'll have to take off. And so what you can do is drain your radiator and then uh, replace the fluid after you're done. What I'm probably just going to try doing is just picking this up and then holding it above the radiator so I don't really have to worry about refilling all the fluids. Um, and of course you should do this when your engine's cold so that you don't have hot radiator fluid going everywhere and burning you or anything like that. So once I do pull this off, I'm obviously going to drain some uh, fluid. And so what I've done is put a drain pan underneath so that I can catch that and it doesn't just dump onto the ground. Alright, so I've got the clamp off and all I need to do now is just pull this hose off. Um, when I do that, I've got a towel which I'm just going to put over the end of it so I don't leak fluid everywhere. And then just kind of sit it upright somewhere over here um, so that I can get in there. Okay, so removing that hose was probably the most difficult part of this. Um, so what I did was I just took some hot water and slowly poured it over where the hose was on this and then just pulled on it really hard and eventually it came off. Um, it definitely helped to have the hot water before I was going nowhere with it. So that's my tip um, if you get stuck at that part. So just use some hot water. Okay, so the two screws we need to remove this one right here and this one down here 
and they're pretty tough to get at, but you can always remove more things if you need to. Um, I just had a wrench and came in from this side to get this one off. Used a socket to get that one off. Alright, so now that we've got that off, you can see our thermostat right here and the gasket. So we're going to replace both of those. So We'll just have to pull that out, and since it doesn't really matter, you can just use a screwdriver, put it in there, and just kind of yank it out. Um, and then we'll put in the new one. So here we have the new thermostat. This is what we're going to replace. And so I've also got a gasket. Um, and you're just going to want to orient this gasket onto this thermostat in the same way that it is already oriented on the one that you have in your car. Pull out the old, put in the new. So I pulled that off and drained a good amount of fluid out, um, so I will have to replace quite a bit, but no worries, it can be done. So that's just what happened when I yanked that thermostat off. Alright, so here we have our old thermostat, and here's the new one. So we're just going to put it in the exact same way that we saw this one in there. So there's these two little rubber notches and if you can see on there here and here there's two little rubber notches or not rubber but metal notches where these two rubber, rubber notches go into so we're just gonna pop that in there and I'm gonna use both hands and turn this off but you get the idea alright so now that we've got that thermostat in there all we have to do is put everything back together and then I will tell you where to go from there Okay, so we've got everything put back together. We've got our new thermostat in there. And so our next step, we're going to have to add some fluid for all the coolant that we lost. So we're going to have to remove this cap. Now once again, this should never be taken off after your engine's been running. Always have a cold engine. And as you can see, the level is not full. So we just need to add that until that fills up. And then we'll start it. We'll leave this off so that we can get some bubbles out of there and then put the cap back on and we're good to go. Alright, so now this is full. I've got my drain pan underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and start up the car. It's probably gonna, you know, bubble out a little bit and we'll have some overflow so I've got that drain pan to catch anything that comes out. Um, hopefully the bubbles will come out. We can add a little bit more, put the cap back on and it should be good. And the other thing we're going to want to check for is just make sure we don't have any leaks in here. Looks good. Looks like nothing's coming out of that, so that's a good sign. Got a little bit of bubbles come in, but... Oh, and it looks like it's going to overflow a little bit. But for the most part, it looks pretty good, so put my cat back on and we are done.